Hey there, boys and girls. We're back with another episode of the Super Dakota build. In this episode, I'm gonna be laying out my steering box, drag link, track bar, and track bar mounts. Now you keen-eyed observers may notice there's already a track bar and a drag link. You would be correct. And while there's obviously some funny business going on here that warrants a lot more explanation, for now, I just wanna take some time to explain the basics of building a track bar and a drag link and how to make sure that they work together. And that's a lot easier to do with a drag link and a track bar to show you. So the main rule of thumb when building a track bar and drag link setup like this is when the axle and the vehicle are level, you want the track bar and the drag link to be sitting parallel with each other and equal length. Now, because this is more of a build video, I'm not really gonna get into why that rule applies, but I will be coming out with another video in the near future that gets into all the nerdy stuff about it. So hopefully if this video doesn't answer all the questions you have, that one will. But anyway, on to the build. The first step in building this whole steering and track bar setup is to pick out a steering box. All right, here are the steering box options that I kind of decided on. That big kahuna in the middle is the stock Super Duty steering box out of a 20... 16 Super Duty, I believe. I think this is gonna be our winner. It's a monster. I mean, if you look at that sector shaft, JK's about inch and a, ooh. Well, these, those might be more like an inch and three sixteenths, but they're pretty close. But the old Super Duty here is an inch and five eighths sector shaft. It is a friggin' monster. The other nice thing about these boxes is because the bore is so big, you don't really need to run hydraulic assist, especially on a truck as light as mine. We've got a bore of probably three inch, maybe three and an eighth, versus this guy, which has a bore of probably something like two and a half, two and a quarter. That's gonna be a huge difference as far as how much that thing can push around. Plus, that big of a sector shaft, this guy's never gonna break. And the other thing that's kind of nice is you can see how far the mounting plane to the pitman arm mounting is. That's gonna allow the track bar to mount quite a bit closer to the frame rail, so won't have to build it way out there. And that just makes me feel better. And it saves me some work, which at this point in this project, I am ready for. Uh, steering box is just where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and tack it in and then I'll start to figure out my other two mounting bosses. One's right here and one's somewhere in this area. All right, now theoretically, I take this clamp off, this thing stays, nothing tries to drop on my face. Oh, look at that. Like a pro. So I'm doing here is first just gonna draw a reference line that I know is perpendicular to the mounting boss on the steering box. From there, I can lock that line in with my sliding T-bevel and now draw a line that is still perpendicular to the steering box but is marking the edges of the bolt to know where the center of the bolt is. Cause now I'm gonna mark out an inch and three eighths wide lines that are centered on that bolt. Cause that is the OD of the tube I'm running to make my mounting bosses. In case you're wondering, that's inch and three eighths OD by three eighths wall tube, which gives it an ID of five eighths, which is basically 16 millimeters, which is what the Super Duty steering box uses as mounting bolts. That should probably be metal.
Perfect. Now with our steering length figured out, we can go ahead and weld on our track bar bracket. This is a bracket I designed, uh, basically just going to weld right on there. It's about right around here, I'm going to have to figure out exactly where it's sitting, but we're at 23 and 3 quarter, which is all the way down here. Now if you notice, that's three and a half inches under the frame, which isn't bad. It's not a terrible place to put it, but that's a little bit low, honestly. I don't want to hang it down that far because I worry about when this whole axle side flexes up, our tie rod here is going to end up crashing into it. So now we're in a predicament. Something has to move. Uh, the, the axle side of the steering, which is the steering knuckle, that's basically what it is. We can't really change that. This track bar mount, raise that track bar mount up. Not gonna do that though, because if this thing's at full compression, that's already really close to hitting the bottom of the frame over on that side. And I also have to worry about tucking it under the oil pan right here. So the only other option to keep everything lined is to get this guy up. Now the steering box is pretty much where it is. I can't exactly move the steering box up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna flip the tie rod end to the other side of this Pitman arm. Let's get to it. Okay, we've got our hole drilled out there. We've got our insert. I had to machine it down because this Pitman arm is the same thickness as the height of that spacer, so I didn't want that shoulder that comes on it. Big part of the taper's on the top. You can see these have just a slight bend to them. There you go. Weld that in, and we're good to go. Now there's still some little fibers from the paper towel in there. I'm just going to burn that out real quick. First though, I'm going to get ready for the welding because I'll actually use the torch here to preheat this a little bit since I've got such a thin piece here and such a thick piece here. Preheating this will just help everything weld a little easier rather than having to pour a bunch of heat into this and trying to pour very little heat into this to get it all to fuse together. Okay, with the drag link tie rod end flipped over, 
we can check our clearance of this Zerk fitting to the body of the steering box here. I think we're good, let's find out. Oh yeah, we're fine. That's as close as it's gonna get right there and that's close to 5 16 of an inch it looks like, a little over a quarter. So we've got plenty there, got full finger within there. No problem, moving on. Okay, and our new height for the drag link tie right in on this side is 25 inches is pretty safe. 25 inches is a good estimate. So we're gonna be 26 and a half inches tall here. 26 and a half, that's a much easier to deal with height for that track bar. Much better. That's good for now. That gets us at least somewhere. I kind of screwed up here. I know, I'm gonna give you guys a second to uh, get over the shock. Obviously got our two mounting bosses in for the power steering box, which is great, but there's also a third one. And uh, I'll give you one guess as to where it sits. Yup, right behind that plate. Of course, why not? Why would it work any differently? It's on me, I should have laid out these three holes all at the same time. It's really not that big of a deal. I'm gonna knock this guy off, leave this one here to keep this joint where we want it, uh, make this hole here for the third mounting boss and bolt. And then once that is in there, I'll put this plate back on and I'll just basically work this plate around the bolt. It's kind of hard to explain, so why don't I just show you? That's the whole point of me doing this. Time to stop messing around. Let's get serious. Fire! 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 <laughs> Probably another round. I'm trying to kind of keep my center about where it was. So I'm trying to just kind of walk around that hole because it was about center. Now I'm just going to walk around it one more time. Try and keep it about an eighth of an inch and that should put me right about where I need to be. That looks pretty good actually. Oh yeah. Clean that up with the die grinder a little bit and we're there. As long as it's in the right spot. Ah, details. <laughs> Time to get the steering box out so we can cut the hole for that mounting boss on the other side. Thank you. 
Now in order for us to get some structure above the other track bar plate here, it's going to be running right about here, you can see the tack still right there. Uh, we've got this two inch quarter wall and I cut it at 17 degrees which is the angle that my frame runs at here at the angle outward and that will just drop over that and stick straight out. I can hang the other one of these track bar mount plates from the bottom of this. I'll cut this afterwards once I figure out where the line is going to be and we can make it look all fancy. Make sense? Good. Okay, looking at about 2.2 there. So uh, we'll tack it on top and that should pull it up a little bit. And then we'll figure out our side to side movement. Make sure that that's, well never mind. apparently that's not what we're gonna do yet. We're pretty much ready to do a little flex test on this thing, make sure that we know what we're doing before we commit and fully weld all this stuff. It's exciting times. All right, this is why we do this. We are learning things. We are nice and clear up here. Nothing to worry about with that tower and clearancing to the frame. We're gonna have to do it on the other side too to just make sure, but that looks perfectly good. That bracket clears really nice. That's pretty sweet. Uh, that's kind of lucky. I was hoping that would work, but I wasn't positive. Uh, we know track bar is, uh, it's got a little bit of a bow to it. So we're just gonna bend the new one a hair rather than having that uh, fight our oil pan because our oil pan will lose. Also, our steering is hitting, so that's good to know. This is our steering at neutral, and it'll actually get worse as I turn this towards the passenger side. So we're gonna have to probably do a little bit of an S-curve in our drag link to get it all to fit. So we'll come off of this joint, come down, up, and then flatten out into our pitman arm. It's not best practice. You don't really wanna pre-bend stuff, but it'll be real slight, and we'll reinforce it to where it won't be an issue. That's pretty much all we need to know on this side. Now let's go and see what happens on the other side. All right, we are all drooped out now on this side. And as you can see, steering might be a little upset with us. So I've got the droop height here, kind of just, just taking the weight with the jack. Now I'm gonna pop this drag link off at the pitman arm there, and we will see if that's bound up and this thing drops anymore. I'm not sure it's going to. I'm not sure it's gonna drop any more than this. But when there's a tire pulling down on this knuckle here and this axle, these will droop further out. So take this guy off and we'll see what we get. All right, so we pop that steering off. Now this thing moves a little bit further down. So we're just about there. We know we need to put a little bend in our drag link. Now we need to put two bends in our drag link. And we need to give ourselves a little bit of a bend in our track bar there but that's why we do it okay and with that done our steering and track bar mounts are all laid out now obviously i don't have the final steering and track bar done yet but i don't have time to get into how i'm building these on this episode i will cover all this in the next build episode so if you haven't already subscribe to the channel 
hit that little bell thingy so you get alerts that I've got a new video out. I'm working on getting them out a little quicker. I've had a lot of crazy stuff going on. So thank you guys so much for being patient. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.